You're listening to Chugging Bleach, the only podcast where the bounce count. Welcome to Chugging Bleach, your number one source for what happened in Bleach over 10 years ago. I'm your host, Bob Video Games, and with me as usual, Anime Danime, Bon Kai, Chris Wolfhart, Resurrection, and Dr. Agro. She's back. I'm worried about who. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, the embodiment no. herself. No. A bad filler. Oh, don't make me think about that yet. That's not for another four episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, the four episodes we're going to cover today are episode 200 through 204. That's four episodes. episodes. No, okay. <laughs> Just like, one moment. Look. It's four real episodes. It's four real episodes. And then one extra episode that's extra fun for aggro. <laughs> but before we get into that, I hear we can access this show early, a whole month early, in fact, on our Patreon. Chris, can you tell me more? Yes. If you'd like early access to this show and many other benefits, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast. For as little as $5 a month, you get early access to this show and another show like it called Pokemon Go to the Movies. Indeed, if you're listening to this on YouTube, there is another episode waiting for you on the Patreon. And you get other benefits too, but I don't talk about them on this show. That's patreon.com slash gbpodcasts. That's great. I'm excited. We're going to cover the episodes, but after that, stick around because we also have special segments coming up. Like, we're going to have to review the ending because we just had one of the endings end this set of episodes. We're going to talk about who is the best dress, something I can hardly remember because I watched these insanely tired, and <laughs> all sorts of other fun segments. But, you know, to get to those segments, we do need to know what happened in these episodes. Chris, what was episode 200 like? <laughs> okay, episode 200. A recap of Mayuri killing Sayaporo. We get a little bit of the aftermath where Sayaporo cries and mauls in the frozen time for hundreds and thousands of years before he dies. And Mayuri gives a little speech about how perfection and how he hates perfection because if something truly perfect existed, there would be no room to improve and not, nothing to discover. So it'd be horrible for a scientist like him. And if Sayaporo was truly a scientist, then he lost the moment he started talking about being perfect. Then he snaps his sword off inside Sayaporo, and she's just like, I'm not going to be a problem for you. And he goes, no. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's fine. Why are you even asking? That's a stupid question. <laughs> it deserved it, actually, for disobeying me. He then tries to call Nimu, but she's kind of dead, so she can't respond. He goes over to her and does something we don't get to see. We see her, him from the back and he hear her doing lewd moans. And Ishida and Rinji are like watching and getting excited. And then she like pops up all glossy and, and healed. And Ishida says he does something that uh, they couldn't show to young audiences. And Mary says, everything I do is acceptable for young audiences. Mm. Then Ishida gets <laughs> indignant, but all his organs are still liquid. So he kind of... <laughs> he kind of has to simmer down. Uh, Rinji tells him to simmer down, and she just like, no, I am calm, but he's having like one of those weird homeschooled kid moral panics. <laughs> 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 then Rinji's like, look, we're, all our shit was juiced. Just just simmer down. Uh, Mary, Mary is watching and is unhappy. He's like, watching you do anything is cringe. <clears throat> Nimu turn into a power drill. And then her like, her hand starts fucking whirling on her wrist. And she starts digging into the ground with it. Out pop Dadan Chaka and Peshe. Then Nimu attacks them. Mayuri hates them. And I think he literally says, I don't associate with comedy relief. Which is strange coming from him. And wants Nimu to kill them. They start doing their shtick and Nimu attacks them and like drills at the floor under them and they dance like it's being shot at, even though that doesn't really make sense. And then she tosses them over the horizon. She, she dug up a door, and Mayuri says that all scientists keep a nuclear bunker where they keep all their most fucked up experiment subjects. Uh, and they open the door, and there's something fucked up in there, but we cut away. We cut to Kenpachi and Noitora, and he slashes Noitora so hard there's like an explosion? But it doesn't do anything because his skin is too hard. Then Noitora cuts Kenpachi. They play grab ass with swords a little bit more, and Noitora is like, you can't fucking cut me, are you stupid? Uh, and then we zoom in on, on Yachiru, who slowly smiles and licks her lips. Back to Mayuri. Nimu is holding Ishida down, and Ishida's struggling, and Mayuri's like, I'm gonna fix you. 
And then Ishida says, you just want to experiment on me. And Mary goes, yeah. Did you, did you think that? Did you think I deny it? But he's not a comic relief character, I swear. <laughs> you, you should be grateful I'm going to heal you no matter what you look like afterwards. Then Nimu suffocates him with her tits. Like she she drops the hangers on his face and Mayuri goes, that's good. Just suffocate him till he quits moving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it did work. And then Rinchi goes, Captain Kurosuchi, heal me first so I can keep fighting. Like that's going to fucking move the needle at all. <laughs> Aww. And Mayuri says, Kenpachi's the only guy fighting and he certainly fucking doesn't need your help. <laughs> right. <laughs> Kenpachi and Noitora fight some more, and Kenpachi is basically manhandling him even if he can't cut him. Noitora dodges, and Kenpachi calls him a little cuck for dodging when he's supposedly in invincible. And Noitora copes really hard over it. He's like, it's obvious to dodge if you're in a fight. That's just fighting instincts, even though you wouldn't have those if you had fucking impenetrable skin. <laughs> Kenpachi then says, even if his skin is hard, I've never met anyone whose throat and eyes couldn't be cut, and then impales him through the eye patch. Surprise, his fucking hole is in the eye patch, so he just reaches and rips Kenpachi's ch chest open and gloats, and Kenpachi grins about it. That's the end of that episode. Wow, not much happened. I wonder if more will happen next time. <laughs> I wonder if that dynamic's going to continue for the next two episodes. <laughs> Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers, not golden. Rinji and Izura are watching the giant tower from the movie we already watched being built. Oh, yeah, that's what that was. That is what this is. Tetsu Zaimon is stealing building supplies because the budget for the Men's Association went to this building. Based. <laughs> He's literally just like, I'm going to steal two by fours till we get our fucking funding back. <laughs> Does he return them to the Home Depot? How is he selling these? <laughs> the Soul Society Home Depot. Yes. I mean, they still need a place to hold their meetings. I assume he's just building a shed. That could work. Episode 201. Kenpachi laughs. Noitora seethes and kicks him like in the injury. And Ken Kenpachi says he's so happy he couldn't Help but laugh. And then he so he's just high on bloodlust again. Uh, they fight a little bit more and he cuts Noitora's arm. Noitora looks like someone fucked his mom in front of him. <laughs> it's pretty bad. He's like, that didn't count. That was a fluke. It was luck that you cut me. It's luck that you cut me. <laughs> uh, Kenpachi is seemingly done warming up and he's, he's literally like, yeah, sorry. I, I haven't had to try in so long. I kind of had to knock the rust off. <laughs> right. Like, whoops, I forgot to turn my sword on. My bad. <laughs> Uh, he mocks Noitora, and Noitora has, like, a temper tantrum, and he attacks, but Kimpachi cuts his stupid sword in half and then slashes him again, and he starts, he, he just starts smacking Noitora around, and Noitora gets all butthurt and uses the, his big saro, and Kimpachi catches it with one hand and just kind of tosses it aside. Noitora starts, like, having the mind break hallucination of Kenpachi being infinitely larger than him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, it was like fucking 5 foot 11 versus 6 foot over here. <laughs> then he knocks Kenpachi's eye patch off, which, uh, reminder, was a, was a suppressing thing to make him weaker. <laughs> so he just goes Super Saiyan and then slashes him again. Kenpachi's just beating his ass. He's just whipping the shit out of him. D Noitora is really butthurt when Kenpachi points out, like, dude, you don't have a shot anymore. Like, sorry. I I I'm taking this seriously now. And then, then, then Noitora, like, charges all his incel energy and releases, and it's <laughs> Prey Santa Teresa. So I, I guess he's like a weird stag beetle because he grows, like, skeletal arms, and then each arm has one of these giant scythes. And Ichigo and Orihime are worried, which says to me they really don't fucking pay attention when Kenpachi does things. <laughs> yeah, we keep getting reactions of them for several episodes here where they're worried about him. It's like, dude, if he does die, he probably liked it. <laughs> Kenpachi's like, nice. You might last more than two seconds. He attacks. Noitora blocks and then cuts Kenpachi and Kenpachi falls down. And then Noitora says, I obviously won. I'll just kill everyone else now. And he starts walking towards Yachiru. And Orihime goes to stop him because she thinks she would matter in the, the situation of that. Um, Ichigo can't get out of the weird fucking bubble she put him in because I guess it's implied that her powers are getting better. It would sure be a shame if, if in this these set of episodes they go, she never matters and will never matter again. Yeah, that'd, that'd be a real shame. 
Yeah. Mm. Uh, anyway, Yashir just points behind Noitora, and of course, Kenpachi is there, and he cuts off one of Noitora's arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't even see it. It just happens between cuts. <laughs> Yashir says Kenpachi gets really mad if somebody targets her, and Kenpachi gets all Sundere about it. And he says, I'm going to cut off all your arms. But wait, if I cut off all your arms, you can't fight anymore. So I guess I'll cut off all but one of your arms. <laughs> That man is so terrifying. <laughs> He's like legitimately mentally five and it is not played for comedy. <laughs> it's played for horror. Uh, Noitora then regrows the arm that was cut off. They fight some more. Kenpachi makes him block with all four arms. So Noitora grows two more and shoves one through Kenpachi's chest. We have the exact same. Oh, no, he must be in trouble. Here's the end of the episode. Done, done. Shit. Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers, also not golden. Never golden. <laughs> it's never over. It's so over. Tetsuzaimon, that is Komamura's lieutenant who keeps who was stealing beams in the last fucking uh, <laughs> Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers. Is it Ichigo's house? He wants Captain Komamura to, to go on an animal variety show to improve <laughs> his squad's <laughs> reputation, which seems pretty confusing considering, like, do they beam TV to Soul Society somehow? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in his head, like, he's imagining him like a male idol with a microphone singing, and they go inside and watch, like, a puppy show, and Komamura is there and likes the puppy show. Okay, that's it. Oh. Episode 202, Noitora grows two new scythes for his two new arms. Like, they, like, pop out of his wrist. Ichigo is worried, but, but Yaichiro basically goes, are you stupid? <laughs> Kinpachi then does the really crazy laugh that Gene Simmons' son ripped off for his comic. <laughs> and he says, uh, the fight mm. is finally even because you finally hurt me. They fight and fight and Kinpachi keeps getting cut and doesn't care and Noitora is shitting his pants besides, despite being the guy who's uh, do, dealing on the, all the damage. The guy with a five engraved on his body screams that he's the strongest over and over. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you didn't have to say it like that. <laughs> Yeah, that's when I started going, the five doesn't mean that, does it? The five means something else. Uh, and then he screams, I'm, I'm the strongest, I'm the strongest, I'm the strongest. And he rushes over and cuts him again. And everybody acts like this is a more severe wound, despite Kenpachi taking up attacks like that like 40 times in this fight already. Kenpachi then reveals his new arc power up, which is holding his sword with two hands. <laughs> it's so good. He's like, no, dude, you don't understand. This shit hits different. It's like, yeah, it's two hands. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> you never like, no, you that? don't know this. This is my secret technique. Shut up. <laughs> like, this sword fight's not going my way. I need to resort to my secret weapon. Basic sword fighting technique. Right. <laughs> they don't say this in the anime, I don't think, but in the manga, during this flashback, they go, yeah, the the... What, what what the fuck were the guys who Eisen killed all of? The Central 46? Yeah, the Central 46. So apparently in the, the Central 46 told Yamamoto, stop teaching him sword techniques. If you do that, he'll be able to kill all of us and none of us would be able to stop him. <laughs> Holy shit. I was hoping that was going to be the case. That's so good. <laughs> Like, you can't teach this fucking guy sword techniques. What are you doing? Do you want Soul Society to be run by the guy with the mental five-year-old age? <laughs> I'm sorry, Kapachi, but both hands at once is as deep into the mysteries of Kenjutsu as you're going to get. <laughs> uh, anyway, Kenpachi swings his sword with two hands once and completely eviscerates Noitora. He's down on all eight with no weapons left bleeding. Kenpachi's like, man, you lived. Cool. And then just starts to leave. Noitora does the get over here and kill me, you bitch thing he did in the flashback again. We then get another flashback with him and Nell. Noitora randomly kills people and Nell thinks that's cringe. She calls him a man child and walks off. Later, he gets into trouble because he keeps picking a fight with every single thing that moves and Nell has to save him. And he seethes about it. She then says, you're you're a violent, pathetic man-child, so it's, and that sets off my mom instinct, so I have to take care of you a little bit. Then we just get his his weird incel rant about how he's a violent in lunatic because he's insecure. And then Kenpachi kills him. The Arankar Encyclopedia! Uh, 
Uh, Gein will explain Noitora. His skin is hard. His release gives him more arms. Gein asks if he can pull things other than weapons from his wrist, and it shows like a, a diagram with, I think, like a big fork and like a drill. <laughs> Episode 203. We open on a flashback where Noitora explains that mercy is for cucks. He goes on and on about how he wants to die gloriously and how pity is for losers and he has to be the strongest and die on his feet. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> right. Tesla, who is somehow fucking alive. Yeah, that dude was chopped in half. What happened? <laughs> watches Noitora lay there dead. Kenpachi's like, all right, thanks. That was cool. He takes his shirt off and walks out and goes over to Ichigo and he pops Orihime's bubble effortlessly and throws Ichigo aside. He's like, go home. You have the girl. That's what you came here for. You're the substitute, Soul Reaper. Leave fighting to the professionals because you and your little friends almost all died. And when the adults showed up, the guess who started dying? The other guys. <laughs> he makes some very good points. He does. He does. <laughs> My guys, roughly equal to me. Your guys, roughly equal to Rinji. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he, he, he keeps calling Orihime woman in this scene. Like, he's fucking Cotton Hill. <laughs> and he says, heal me, woman. And she moves to do that, but then Stark, the really plain-looking Espada, Sonito's in, grabs her, and takes her before either of them can react, so his dick must be pretty big. That shot wounded me in my soul. Because, like, he, like, he's leaning over her shoulder in, like, this creepy way. And then he, like, reaches down, and they don't show it, but I know he just full on Kyrie wrist grabbed her and her nervous system shut down. Well, yes, she's she's she is a non-combatant heroine in a shonen series. Being grabbed by the upper arm is full body paralysis <laughs> instantly. <laughs> Dude. Uh, mm. uh, she wakes up in front of Aizen. He basically is like, OK, I'm going to go destroy your town now. Bye. <laughs> and then he turns on the Bakudo intercom. He's going to invade the living world. You all thought I needed Orihime, but I don't actually need Orihime. That was a ruse to get all the strongest captains to Hueco Mundo so I could trap them here. That's actually a really smart plan. Yeah. I'm a lot less... I think Soul Society would be... Byaku, you got Byakuya and Kinpachi And Unohana, who is, is so... Who has not done anything yet. So you know when she does, it will be a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Urahar is the one who got them here, and they can't contact him to tell him they're trapped, so they can't reopen the door so they can get out. He then says, three captains defected and four are trapped in Hueco Mundo. So less than half a like you, Soul Society has only has six guys. And he says, and, and once I destroy Soul Society, I'll come back, and if anybody, any of the people I left here want to fight, we'll go. You know, I'll fight them myself even. You know, he's doing this explanation. I'm just sitting there going, but there are 13 captain cards. What do you mean six? One second. I, I lost track of how many motherfuckers are in bleach. <laughs> one plus one plus one plus two. I think either he's <laughs> gaslighting me and inflating his own numbers, or I'm assuming there are way more people here than there are. Ichigo freaks out. Kenpachi's like, the old man predicted this. Don't worry about it. They sent, every, they sent everybody, every other officer to Karakura Town. So we get a really cheap scene where they digitally zoom on like key art of the captains and their lieutenants in front of colored backgrounds. All of them. Yeah. Even Soy Fon's guy, who is a complete jobber. No, he's his things are looking up for him, okay? Yeah, I'm sure his I'm sure with his fucking bowling ball, he'll really deliver this time. <laughs> Like they might be bringing jobbers from from Pokemon Do too. We don't know. <laughs> Chad understandably thinks, uh, even if they get fought off, they're gonna completely destroy the city. And then, luckily, Urahara built four pillars to take them to the Advent Children No Collateral Damage Dimension. <laughs> yup. They made an entirely fake Karakura town, which frankly seems I don't see why that step was necessary. I yeah, I I guess the fool eyes in, but I feel like after he's opened the portal he knows he knows yeah they made a car occur town and swapped it with the real one mary explains this and is like it was quite difficult but i managed to do it but i'm a genius <laughs> they sent all the residents to soul society in a magic sleep okay uh it's basically like 
look, Kubo wanted to, to draw the city getting destroyed, but he didn't want to deal with the like the narrative and emotional fallout <laughs> right? of that. So, it's like, we can't destroy the city, but we can't have more than three locations in Bleach. Yeah, don't be ridiculous here. Aizen makes like the first face he's ever made, where it's like, my plan isn't going the way I thought it would. <laughs> Yamamoto and Aizen like wag their dicks at each other a little bit and Aizen's like I'll just kill you and then go to Soul Society to blow it up easy um, and then calls his guys which are Stark the plain guy Baragon the old man and Harabel the woman I guess they're the top three because we know everybody else's numbers Ulkiora has to stay behind so he can fight Ichigo when Ichigo gets there and like that's not the plan but that's what's going to happen obviously mm. what no way and Yami is the Rinji of Espada so it just makes sense to leave him behind Oh, I forgot Yami was still alive. I thought he died again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he got his arm back, uh, jobbed a little bit, and then hasn't done anything since. Aizen says he'll... Aizen, like, he, he, he's like, okay, I'll kill you all. Uh, Ulkiora, you, you take care of everything back here. As he, like, breaks out of the dimension, Grimjow sealed him in. Inside the throne room... Oh, right. That's what happened to him. I... It been just long enough since yeah. we watched. An Bleach, entire I fucking filler arc. An entire fucking filler arc happened between that happening and now. God. Because it happened right before Grimjow fought Ichigo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it must really fuck up your ability to retain what's going on when you get fucking shivved in a dark alley by terrible filler! <laughs> the episode preview has Ruichiro in it. No, no, no! no random filler bubble, no! <laughs> no. <laughs> this is not how this was supposed to go again! <laughs> Why her? Can't we go back to the bounce? <laughs> yeah, I just like remember when the bounce made Jin Carrier like the patron saint and he, the like epitome of filler villain. No, now it's Ruricio. Yeah, unfortunately, they killed everyone from that filler arc, so they can't. They, they didn't kill. They didn't kill Richard Epcar. They didn't kill Richard Epcar's character. They just depowered him. So he, now he lives in that fucking hole on the outskirts with the with the weird woman. Oh yeah, he's just like it's a good life. <laughs> I haven't had to talk to Lady Ruricio once. <laughs> <laughs> Illustrated guide to Soul Reapers, not golden. Not golden. Uh, Rangiku is giving a class on how to appear sexy to Isane, Yachiru, and Nimu. She doesn't think any of them succeed. Nanao enters and is scandalized. That's it. Episode 204. We open at Ichigo's school. Keigo runs his shtick and gets hit. Mizuru ignores Keigo's existence. Ichigo enters his the classroom and fucking Ruricio is there. She's just there. <laughs> we just have to live with that. <laughs> Ichigo and Ruricio have a conversation on the roof. R Ruricio is like, I, I, it, being a leader is hard, so I left. Ichigo blows her off when she tries to talk to him and goes back to class. Keigo gets ditched after school by Ichigo before he even realizes he's been ditched, and Ichigo complains... About Ruichiro to Orihime, Chad, and Rukia. Ashida is Ashida's like, I, I will not appear for anything involving this girl. <laughs> like, I'm taking a moral stand to not appear in Ruichiro plots. Uh, then Rukia kicks him in the face for not dropping everything to protect the girl from the no threat. Orihime gets convinced she'll drown somehow and is like, we need to give her water wings. Ichigo cuts her off because she starts to go into those delusions she goes into sometimes. And they all decide to spread out and look for Ruricio across the entire city. Yep. That sure will fill some time. They can't find her. Shock. Ashita shows up and is like, you didn't check her Ahara's first? And they go check her Ahara's and she's there and her Ahara's like, you didn't check here first? <laughs> uh, they say nothing for a while and then go to Denny's. Excuse me. It's called Berries. At first, I thought it was Ben Rees because one of the signs That's is a little messed up. That's also what I thought it was, up. yes. <laughs> I like Ben Rees more than Barry. Ben Rees is pretty funny. <laughs> Has some real, what was it, Manfred Cannabitch energy. Mauricio is acting way more like a brat than in the filler arc, I get, because I guess that they, that's what the plot needs. She tuckers herself out and Ichigo carries her home. Kenryu shows up and we find out all this happened because... Ruricio wanted to play hacky sack so much. It's Kamari, which is hacky sack. It's hacky sack with like a, a bigger ball. They bicker. Kenryu runs off. The next day, Ichigo watches Ruricio play soccer and she explains the filler plot made her territory a shithole and she wants to have a Kamari festival because she saw the fucking World Cup on TV in the human world. 
Kenryu thinks it's stupid. Everybody talks about this and wants to explain it to Kenryu. Luckily, he's in the fucking same Denny's as them. That was easy. <laughs> they explain it to Kenryu, and Kenryu's like, well, I think we should focus on sucking up to the no other nobles that don't exist, because that's not how soul society actually fucking works. Kenryu then decides to kill himself over this. Oh, yeah, before we move too far past it, also in the Bennies, the Berries, sorry. Yeah. Behind the main cast. Oh, God, did you? Oh, okay. oh, God. We see the main characters from the first movie. She's just, what? She's just sitting in the, the seat behind them. You see her t her ponytail and, and spe special ribbon. Yeah. Well, they did imply she was... Didn't didn't he, like, fucking walk past her in the ending of that movie? Maybe. How sadistic are they? Yeah. I, you can't just show her in filler like this. Especially when that movie was, like, way better than this filler. <laughs> Really got to go back for this movie. <laughs> it's really funny because it's like Ichigo operating at peak. No, I'm really strong and you're not. <laughs> and then it's theme place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. God. Why'd you have to tell me that, Bob? I could have lived my whole life never noticing that. I know. He pointed it out and I started shaking. I'm like, that can't. No, Bob, that's not. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Kenryu decides to kill himself. Like, he gets down on his knees and pulls out the fucking seppuku dagger and is gonna fucking gut himself. And Ichigo tries to stop him, and nobody else is interested. They're like, fucking let him do it. Yeah, yes. Ishida even says, let him do it. I'll cut off his head for him and pulls out the fucking, uh, God, what's it called? Oh, the... Shit. <laughs> is it Schneider? Yeah, I think yes. so. Zayla Schneider. Zayla yeah, the Zayla Schneider. Schneider. He pulls out the Zele Schneider and is like, well, I don't have a sword, but this arrow is kind of like a sword, so I'll, I'll use that to decapitate you after you after you commit seppuku. They just... The, the, I'm skipping ahead to when they reveal this, but, but it was obvious even to fucking me the second this started. that This is all set up so they can emotionally manipulate this child. Ichigo goes and is like, he's going to kill himself. Tell him to stop. And she's like, I don't care if he kills himself. And then she... And then she does care, and then she almost gets hit by a car, but Inryu, the other retainer, saves her, so she cares even more. And we flash back to this stupid fucking plan being formulated. And she runs to the riverside where where Kenryu is performatively pretending to kill himself. What is this? A fucking emotionally abusive Discord server? <laughs> and she cries and stops him. But then he says Kimari is stupid, so now we have to have a fucking competition. This filler is multiple episodes. Nightmare. <laughs> <sighs> Illustrated's Guide to Gold Soul Reapers. There is no gold here. Die. Rinji is taking Ichigo to where he gets his goggles that he doesn't fucking wear anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ichigo is illiterate and can't read the name. Rinji says, are you, are you fucking illiterate? It's, it's here. Here's a hint. It's based on a bug that looks like it's wearing glasses. Ichigo says slug, but it's dragonfly. Laugh. Those are the episodes. Great. Thank you so much, Chris. Those episodes are... Fine. <laughs> Tw approximately 22 minutes each. It yes. aired on television. <laughs> yes. But that means we get to move on to our segments. Segments like reviewing the new ending that just ended. It actually ended on episode tw 201, I believe. Uh, but like usual, the 12 episodes of it. And this is for E.D. Hito Hira no Hanabira by Stereo Pony. We reviews these on a scale from 1 to 10, and we can talk about how we liked them. Dr. Edgar, how do you like this ending? I honestly really like this one. Uh, I, I've said before in describing other EDs that there is, like, there are songs that are great, and then there are songs that make great EDs, and this is <laughs> definitely one of them. Like, it's, it, it, it's, it's solid, it's not too hype, but it's got good energy. It's the kind of song you can play after a, a wide variety of emotional endings to episodes, and it it all sort of tracks in there. It It's understated to the point of being cheap with just panning over a bunch of art of characters. Mm -hmm. But the best part about it as an ending is that it has what eventually turns out to be a cherry blossom fluttering in the wind on the side of the screen that just looks like it may be the end of a finger or maybe a tongue just waggling <laughs> throughout the entire thing, distractingly, for no fucking reason. <laughs> so between that beautiful gem and, honestly, this song being really good, I'm prepared to give this one like an eight. All right. Feeling positive? 
Dan, how how did you like it? I'm on the more positive end of this, even if it just made me go bad apple. <laughs> uh, I think I think I'm gonna give it a seven. You know, it's a little cheap visually, but the the song has a good beat. It has an interesting sound to it. I think, generally speaking, you can't go wrong if you hit at least this good with your ED. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and go. I also think the the song is nice, fun, poppy, uh, but the visuals are really bad, like comically so. We see the edges of different art that we really shouldn't uh, <laughs> while well, they pan by it. Like you can see where the frame clearly ended, and they're like, "We don't care." <laughs> Wow, it's me making a thumbnail for Big Think in 10 minutes. <laughs> right? Um, so I'm going to give it a six because I think the visual presentation needs to be a little bit better than this. And yet, it doesn't have Ichigo's family horribly ruined to be I the incorrect shape inside. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it is markedly better than that. I'll take it. <laughs> Chris, what did you think? Uh, I really like the song of this ED. I feel like it's like a perfect ED song. Agro did. Agro has is totally correct that there are songs that make great EDs. They have the exact right like level of energy and tone. I think the visuals are a little uh a little plain. It's it's the it's the if you opened a can marked anime ED, <laughs> you'd be like, "Uh yeah, it's panning over still art or like a digital zoom through them." And it is that but my bar for a bad one of those is the third Yu-Gi-Oh 5D's ending Ozone. And if you don't know what that is, look it up on YouTube and fucking look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you will you will learn a whole new meaning of fucking off model. Wow. So I will give this a seven. Well, let's see. With the seven, that brings Hitohira no Hanabira uh, up to 28 points total. And exactly an average score of... Seven. Oh my god, the perfect hmm. mediocre ending. <laughs> it's just <laughs> flawless. Exactly good enough. Right? <laughs> sometimes you want it sometimes you want a seven more than a ten. <laughs> Am I building furniture? <laughs> <laughs> While watching anime EDs? I yeah, just, I guess. No, I mean, hey, you that know doesn't what? sound that bad. Yeah, yeah no, just, that sounds perfect. Get a actually. playlist, get going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this ending. You know, air of the old TV show Airwolf, Dead <laughs> Island 2. They all exist in the same cultural space. Now we're going to move on to my favorite segment, the Best Dressed Award. Dan, who is the best dressed? Uh, Shinji's looking great as always in that ED. I'm going to give it to my boy. Uh, very, very professionally dressed. He's got some real drip. Uh, unfortunately, not a lot of people were bringing it strong this episode, so he yet again wins. <laughs> and so is that new ED or old ED? Old ED. Old ED, okay. Old ED. Old ED. 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 <laughs> yeah, we don't... ED, 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 ED. Not a ton happened in these episodes, but we do have a whole new ED that we can take outfits from. I'm just holding off because, like, those are good. I, I'm, We're going to need to save for winter. And, oh, mm -hmm. you know, we had some gaps open to the sky and 37 dudes were like, check out my outfit! And I'm like, yo! <laughs> Here we are for two frames. Most of you look like crap, but I'm not going to pause to find out if I like any of you. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, who is your best dressed this time? I'm going to give it to Tetsu Zaimon when he's working on the building because he has a fucking ridiculous outfit. First of all, he has like a full body, like, shirt on like with like a turtleneck and like bright pink pants i have images good because i actually i i almost felt like this outfit but i couldn't quite remember it and i didn't have time to go grab an image so i'm excited to see more of it oh yeah oh this is good <laughs> why is he dressed like that for stealing dubai force this, this is japanese construction wear right like the 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 loose baggy pants the the long sleeve with the high collar oh yeah I, I believe this is similar to how Pedro dressed in Exile Saga. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'll go. Uh, I'm going to give it to the transformation of Noitoro. Like, I think that transformation looks way cooler than he ever deserved. <laughs> it's got the <laughs> six arms going on, the crazy size, and yeah. And you see his uh, open eye patch with the, the hole there with, that has a mouth around it, which is weird. You know, if he were a different person... Uh huh. And if he was saying different stuff, I'd be there with you. I just hate him so much. But when he grew the extra arms, like, like, what are you gonna do with with all six at once? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> no, he sucks super bad. <laughs> you think my weapon's stupid now? Wait till I have five more of them. Go on. Wow. <laughs> that really is six times as dumb. <laughs> I was going to ask, Agro, is it stupider with more of them or less stupid? It's stupider with more of them all coming from the same body. <laughs> yeah. Like if you had six guys with each with one of those, maybe we could work something out. <laughs> all right. And that just leaves Dr. Agro. Who is your best dressed? Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, interestingly enough, it's the same pick I had last time for a, a new twist on an old outfit. It's shirtless Kenpachi. <laughs> it's a good outfit. <laughs> Just, you know, he decides that at a certain point you are over accessorized and he, he, he reduces, he streamlines his look, he takes off the Hayori and he's just, you know, he's got enough to work with, uh, as is just, just the Hakama and the sword. It really makes a bold statement. It reminded me of that part in P Prince of Persia Sands of Time where your main character, the prince has several nicks on his shirt and he's like, oh, well that that's over. I got to take this whole thing off. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, uh, I you know, normally we would put these things in as a clarification and post of a, like, oh, a factual error was made in this uh, podcast. But I figured I would just say here uh, that the first Inuyasha ED is actually like peak ED, just so we're... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just obviously. So we're, just so we're clear. I feel like everyone knows that now that I've said it. I mean, we've been over we this before. Forgot. I feel, I think we've, it always comes up. It's the best ED there is. <laughs> Let me see about this. Let me see. I don't know, like, there's there, there's one FMA ED I always hold up, but I can never remember which one it is. I feel like the ultimate ED is Heart of Sword, but... It's pretty high up there. Yeah, it and Heart of Sword, the Inuyasha one and Heart of Sword are just right there battling. <laughs> it's, it's like watching two gods duke it out. All right, moving on from that, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta figure out if Dan wants to keep watching Bleach on a scale of <laughs> 1 to 10. 1. <laughs> She has re-emerged. <laughs> yeah, we don't know how long she's going to be here. Bob, you saw my face when I she do. appeared. I know how long she's going to be here because I keep track of when we're going into fucking filler arcs. Hey, I'm going to tell you the exact optimal amount of episodes for her to continue forward because we saw the preview. Zero. We know how many she's in, so uh, one. She <laughs> that dies in that episode thing. and everything improves. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we will never see her again after this, no matter how long it is, because we will get another filler arc with new filler characters and they won't want to try and keep it consistent with the previous filler arcs. So she just won't be there. We, oh, yeah. No, it's like she exists in a bubble. This episode starts and they're like back in this timeline. Can't we right. just have that medic from Soul Society working at the convenience store? No, he's done. He had to go back. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Can he can he can he administer a lethal injection to Lady Rorichia <laughs> and then get a parade through Soul Society for how good he is? Oh, how, if only. How could they do that to me? They're like, by the way, flashbang. <laughs> it's Lady Rorichia, and I'm like, you saw my face. I can't believe they put that in the preview. Like, yeah, no, you saw my face. I, I, I that was the worst. The, I did. You. Do. That's the sort of thing that I bet. I bet when this initially aired, I just didn't watch that episode. <laughs> I bet that I saw that in the preview, and I was like, I guess I don't need to tune in next week. <laughs> or again. <laughs> Every time they do filler, that tends to fucking happen. <laughs> All right, Chris. Do you have any insane trivia this time? Yes. Ooh. So there is a extra chapter of Bleach that is not adapted into the anime, nor do I believe it is collected in any volume, but it is done by Kubo and it is official. It is called Not B, comma, But B. Is this a real thing? <laughs> Dan. Yes. Bob. Sure. Agro. I have two clarifying questions. Uh, when you say B, is it just the letter or is it, is it a word? It is the word like to be or not to be. Okay. Oh, how many T's are in butt? <laughs> One. <laughs> um, oh, I'm going to go with no. 
It is a real thing. Damn it. It is like <laughs> 15 pages long. It is about Ulkiora's quote unquote backstory. Okay. And that's it. I've read it. It's I, I will I will link it once we once the story starts focusing on Ulkior again. Cause we did say all of Bleach. Great. So we have to include this weird chapter that's been included in nothing and nowhere. I'm sure that they're just holding out. That's what they're gonna do once they finish adapting everything. It'll be like, oh, now it's time. It's they'll start doing the books time. and they'll do this. <laughs> they'll do the weird fucking book that stars Don Kanoji. Ooh. Ugh. Finally, his time. Oh, God. Hell yeah. I'm excited for him to make the return to the anime. I'm sure it's happening. I feel like I feel like he'll have to show up at least one more time. Hercule versus Don Kanonji. Who wins? Ooh. Like in a fight? Yeah. Uh, that's going to be Hercule, my guy. <laughs> Don Kanonji might go insane and bite him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Hercule, but Hercule, like, he's a joke in the context of Dragon Ball. He still drug five buses across the stadium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a legit yeah. world champion. <laughs> Just not, you know, against any of the Z fighters. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bob, that's that that's that's from the that's the term from the nineties. The new official term is the super warriors. No, 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 no <laughs> go, that. go away. That <laughs> We're done with that shit. <laughs> um I guess we gotta review these episodes. We're gonna use our tightness scale goes zero to 25 because bleach went really bad at some points and we needed that zero (laughs) chris what do you think how tight were these four of the episodes get a five (laughs) so i give these a 20 wow that's weird didn't you just say four of them got a five why that would make 20 right there that that implies (laughs) something about that (laughs) fifth episode Uh, i'll go ahead and go I really like some of the stuff that happened in these. I think that uh, it's very funny seeing Noitoro pretend to be the battle crazy, really into fighting guy, and then be up against Kempachi. He's like, no, you aren't that guy. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But I feel like these episodes don't get enough done. They, they drag a little bit and r- repeat content in a way that makes them not that fun to watch and then we hit that filler and it hurts so i'm gonna give this like a 12. it was not great uh dr agra i found the the kenpachi noitoro fight unique because there's there's a thing that happens in especially battle shown in fights where like one character will reveal their true strength and oh now we've established who's got the upper hand and you know often like that gets reversed oh it's a twist now this character clearly has the upper hand that's all this fight is is them <laughs> just flexing and then ah now my dick is an inch bigger ah, ah, ah. but mine is now the dick that is an inch bigger it, it's like the Byakuya sonido shadow step <laughs> For like three episodes, it's amazing. And it ends with two hands. <laughs> <laughs> two hands, bro. I don't understand how you possibly could think you were me. Because you're fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> and and then uh, Lady Riccio shows up. And I was honestly very excited. <sighs> because Kabude's dead. I'm a guy. Dead. <laughs> 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 Maybe we're going to have a lot of fun here. And then we get halfway through the episode. I'm like, oh, oh, everyone in this is written like an idiot. Wow. Yeah. You, like, I can't believe you're disrespecting the filler characters <laughs> like this. <laughs> we are in for some dark times. But, you know, I'll give the whole set like an 18. <laughs> Dan, what do you think? Overall, I felt pretty positive about the Ken Pachi fight. Um, there's really cool moments. It's really hilarious that he uses two hands. Yes. Um, the enemy is just constantly jobbing the whole way through the fight. It just, it's <laughs> so bad. It is so bad. He grows so many arms and it's like, dude, even I know that ain't going to help. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, oh no, we got two more arms. Ha ha. And two more arms. Surprise. <laughs> um, it's pretty funny. It's pretty enjoyable. It looks good. Mostly. Yeah, just don't look at... Uh, Mostly. <laughs> and, or <laughs> Hime or Yachiro. Definitely don't look at Yachiro. Um, and then my blood went cold when we hit that last episode. 
And the only thing good in that last episode is berries. Because <laughs> being in a fake Denny's is very funny. And I like to believe the spirit of that person from the first movie just haunts that Denny's. <laughs> I'm going to give it a 15. It really wasn't bad overall, but man, that last episode sours it. Mm -hmm. And it definitely isn't the heights of bleach that I've experienced right before the last time we went into filler. Yep. And bleach sure is the, the whole mood. <laughs> God, do you, do you think that they're going to they're going to have some unbelievably cool thing again and then be like, here, here's not time for time for more than half a year of filler again? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I believe we are in for that, and I'm not happy. No. <laughs> no. <sighs> it's over. It's all over. Come back next month. It'll be... Okay, it's gonna be pretty depressing, I think. Oh, no! <laughs> Don't say that! <laughs> Don't leave us here alone. <laughs> Maybe there'll only be there'll only be one episode with... 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 <laughs> Ruricio! <laughs> Yeah, it's just gonna be one, and she's gonna be like, "I have to go back to my <laughs> own planet," and then she'll fly <laughs> up. You get to watch. Um, let me see here. Uh, stop filling out the past history of. Oh no, I don't like any of this. Hey, before you down that jug of bleach, how about you head on over to Patreon.com/slash/GBPodcast. You can get the next episode of Chugging Bleach early and help support us doing insane seven year long endeavors like watching all of Bleach. We also do many other shows that you can get extras for. And if you ascend to Vasto Pod Lordes, you'll even get credit for it on Big Think Dimension, our weekly gaming podcast. If not, that's fine. We'll see you next time you're thirsty for some bleach. The executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, A Reminder for Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.